Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Workplace Wellness Buffet. I'm going to hand you over now to Andy Forbes, who's going to talk to us about values and beliefs. Thank you very much. So thanks for joining me today. Um, I hope you've enjoyed the, uh, the event so far. My name is Andy Forbes. Um, I was honoured to be asked to present today um, by Victoria and the rest of the team. There's a wealth of expertise and experience being shared this week and uh, hopefully I can add some value. So just a quick rundown of uh, what I'll be looking at today is just a uh, quick introduction, who I am, um, what are values and beliefs, and then there's a bit of a workshop at the end. Um, there's a there's an ebook available in the chat section if you want to download that and have a look at it. It's, it's kind of it's got a bit of the workshop stuff in the later pages, so that'd be useful if you want to have a look at that. So, who am I and why am I here? Unlike uh, many of the other speakers, I'm, I'm not a professional life coach. Um, in, in fact, a, a full time uh, 3D modeler and a part time wellness blogger. What I do have in common with the rest of the team, however, is that I have a passion for helping others who may have found themselves in a, a similar situation to me. So this talk will come from perhaps more of a personal standpoint than many of the other talks. Um, so I wanted to start with a bit of a quick synopsis of uh, my experiences of mental health. My experiences have driven me to share what I've learned uh, and my blog uh, of Mind and Body is a dumping ground for my thoughts on topics that are important to me and subjects that I've given a lot of thought. And the resulting articles are an attempt to explain how I have changed my outlook on life in the last couple of years and how I've overcome some of the challenges that I've faced. So over the years, I've struggled with uh, anxiety, uh, overthinking, catastrophizing, all the classic pitfalls of uh, general anxiety. When I was younger, maybe 20 years ago or so, society's awareness around mental health wasn't as developed as it is now. And I just thought that's the way I was. I didn't think there was anything that could be done about it. And uh, I just thought that's the way life was really. But over the years, it began to become a little problematic and quite frankly, it was quite exhausting at times. Um, it's also meant that I set the bar for my own level of mental health pretty low. And I, so I began to experience more challenging mental health issues every so often. So every few years or so, I would really struggle to hold things together and I would feel the need to retreat into my shell, uh, which was a common, a common coping strategy of mine. Uh, not an effective one, but um, a coping strategy nonetheless. So I would experience these dips every few years. And in 2018, this culminated in a pretty full on mental breakdown, existential crisis, whatever you want to call it. So externally, this manifested itself in sort of long term relationship breakdown. I began to hate my job. I couldn't really deal with day to day interactions. And I really started to isolate myself. And I soon discovered that I had a general lack of purpose and meaning in my life. And this internally manifested itself as sort of really increased anxiety, despair, and depression. And I was in a pretty bad place. I was finding it almost impossible to answer any of the questions I was asking myself. And I was starting to ask myself some pretty deep questions. Um, so asking yourself questions like this might not be the best strategy in the middle of a, a breakdown, but um, these were questions that I, I felt needed to be answered. And it was maybe not that I couldn't answer these questions, but it was, had I even ever asked myself these questions before in all seriousness? So what followed was a, a pretty intense uh, period of introspection and uh, soul searching. So over the years, I've tried CBT, uh, hypnosis, talking therapy, mindfulness meditation, all of which have been really useful. And, and alongside uh, a lot of research, you know, reading into psychology, philosophy, stoicism, 
I would say that's where my approach now is. It's like an amalgamation of all of these strategies. So one thing that I have learned is that you're never alone and you're never the only person to experience what you're experiencing, no matter how isolated you feel and no matter how, how unique your situation feels to you. There's, there's always somebody out there who's been through the same. And you won't be the first and you won't be the last, but that, that doesn't necessarily make it easier to deal with at the time. But it does mean that there is uh, some knowledge out there already and on ways to deal with um, what's going on. So that's what prompted me to start writing about my own experiences. And, and this served two purposes, really. Um, to get getting my experiences out on paper helped me to clarify my thoughts. It helped me to construct a narrative that is coherent and helpful. And without this carefully constructed narrative, my thoughts tended to be fairly jumbled and repetitive. So it's, you know, it's effectively journaling, but I'm, I'm putting it um, into the blog. And the second purpose is um, to help others. The intention to fast track other people's journeys to, to find some kind of useful approach to managing their own mental health. And in a way to reduce the amount of uh, metaphorical rocks that need to be overturned before finding something useful underneath. So that's become the purpose of, of what I'm doing, to help others find their own meaning and purpose, or at least to help them on their way to finding a more peaceful existence. So this is one of my favorite quotes, uh, one of the quotes I stumbled across when I was beginning to search for some answers. Life is not about finding yourself, it's about creating yourself. Um, I think there's a misconception that if you feel lost, then you need to find yourself. And this statement sort of flips that statement on his head. So for me, the term finding yourself implies that um, if you look hard enough, you'll stumble across a, a fully formed version of you, you know, a version of you that completes the jigsaw of your existence. And that the, the answer to life's hard questions might just miraculously pop into view. But in reality, I found that this takes a certain amount of effort, soul searching, evaluating, reflection and introspection. And while this does involve some amount of discovery, it remains that we need to be actively uh, start looking and considering how we want our lives to look. And the creative aspect of this process should not be overlooked. So it's like switching the question from who am I to who do I want to be? The journey of self-reflection is uh, where I discovered the principles of values and beliefs that I'm presenting today. So I forgot to mention at the start, actually, if you've got a pen and paper handy, that'd be uh, great. So if you can get one, uh, so we'll be, could be coming up to the workshop in a, in a bit. So as I, as I was writing the articles for my blog, I noticed that I started using the phrase values and beliefs quite a lot. Um, but I hadn't really actually addressed what these are. So that's what prompted me to pull together the ebook. E um, so put simply, your values and beliefs are a list of statements, actions, and intentions that you see as most important to you. So the thing is, we all hold certain values and beliefs, and these inform our decisions and guide us through life. But I would say a lot of us, possibly most of us, don't know or have a clear picture of what these values and beliefs are. And we've never spent the time to write them down and to solidify the message that we're telling ourselves every day. So what we're looking at today is the start of forming a definitive list of our own values and beliefs. So why should we do this? Your values and beliefs are your guiding principles that inform your decisions, identify your priorities and shape how you interact with the world. So clarity of thought is essential when making tough decisions. I think we all know that, but I would say Clarity of thought is essential when making any decision, really. 
not just the tough ones, because every single decision we can uh, we make can have an impact on the quality of our overall mental landscape. And ideally, these decisions would be informed by and be in alignment with our core values and beliefs. It's a set of drivers that lays out how we intend to live and what values bring us the greatest sense of personal well-being. Also, clearly defining your core values and beliefs will help you understand the importance of making difficult decisions and why sometimes the easy decision will hinder you in the long run. You probably have a vague idea of uh, what values are important to you, a general sense of right and wrong. And you will know instinctively when you've made a bad decision or when somebody is acting in a way that seems unacceptable. But in the moments when you need them, when you're forced to make snap decisions, these values can be hard to access. The need to be accepted or your fear of confrontation may suddenly jump to the front of the queue in your mind. But in the long run, you know, some, sometimes you need to make a different decision. So unless you have clarity, your guiding principles can abandon you as you fumble around and you decide to do something that is easy in the moment. You may make decisions that you will regret tomorrow instead of something that you will thank yourself for, look back on and be proud of. So many corporations spend thousands or even tens of thousands hiring expensive business consultants to establish core values for their business. It's a message that binds the component parts of the business and ensures that they're all pointing in the same direction, working towards a shared goal, and then they feel valued and have a, a story that they can buy into. A clearly, set, uh, a clearly defined set of values that displays to the wider team and their clients what they are about, how they intend to operate, and what it means to do business with them. They are saying to their team, this is what it means to work here. So why would you not do this for yourself? Why not say to yourself, this is what it means to be me. This is how I will live. And these are my intentions. So this list will act as a foundation for everything when it comes to your mental and emotional well-being. You can look at it as an operating manual for you, your playbook to guide you when life becomes a challenge. So we're going to have a look at creating our own list of values and beliefs. So this is a, a task that um, you can spend as much time on as you like, and I would, I would advise to spend a lot of time on it. Uh, I think to do this task and do it justice will probably take more than half an hour or so. So today I just want to get us started on, on going down that path of creating this, um, this list. And hopefully you'll feel inspired to complete this in your own time. This list is also something that's very personal to you. So um, yeah, I so I read the the ebook you should all have access to. Um, hopefully you've downloaded that. So what's the difference? Well, have a closer look at what we're trying to uh, outline here. So values. Um, principles and ideals that you believe in, unwritten rule values that you believe are important to you. So these act as a constant reminder of where your heart and soul lie. So values are judgment calls that you made that reflect moral and ethical principles that you need to uphold. So for example, you know, it's, um, respect, gratitude, diversity, grace, justice, family. I mean, there's, a, there's hundreds of these that you could choose from. But what we're trying to do today is start to, to filter out which of these are most important to you. So these are this. I went through this process and it, I put it into one of my articles on the website. And so this is all available to be read. So this is just an idea of. Um, what you might come up with. Um, so I've, I've identified these values, but I've also, uh, I want you to think about how these values apply to you personally and how, because your interpretation of these is very important. 
and you'll know when you've hit on the right thing, it'll just resonate clearly with you. So for example, honesty, it's not just about, I will not lie. You know, for me, it means honestly representing other people. So not to take other people's intentions falsely. So, but then, so this list is, is, is your list. Um, I would encourage you to identify these values and then, um, yeah, just really think about how they apply to you. So beliefs, what are beliefs and how do they differ? So these are ideas that you hold to be true for the way the world works. These are a set of beliefs that are fundamental to your character. Uh, these beliefs are in alignment with your character and who you are. So chosen statements that you choose to hold as important to you and they reflect who you are as an individual. So for example, the, the, again, these are mine. I find these really useful and uh, statements to go back to and remember um, when I'm, you know, when I'm, when I'm struggling. So before we jump into it, uh, this is actually where I got the idea for doing this. So I don't want to take any credit for this process. And, it, you know, it's, it's pretty um, standard stuff, I think. Uh, um, so this book, The Chin Paradox, is um, it's a great book. And there's a section in it where he outlines what he calls the stone of life, uh, which in his words is, uh, it's your ultimate reference point is where your truths of life, values and life force are all inscribed. So this principle gives you an excellent framework on which to build your own values and beliefs. So the stone of life contains the following. Values, beliefs and life force. So we've covered values and beliefs. So what's the life force? This is an extra, this is the third part of the uh the uh the, the list we're gonna come up with he calls it a life force or i call it the emission statement and this is uh, how he describes it so imagine that you're 100 years old on your deathbed with one minute to live your great great grandchild asks tell me what i should do with my life and answering this question will identify what is important to you this is really advice to yourself so To just sit down and um, write your closely held values and beliefs and mission statement would be a bit of a task. And as I alluded to before, many of us may not have thought seriously about what our values and beliefs are. So I've, I've split this into three steps to get us going. So each of the three values, beliefs and uh, mission statement will go through these three steps for each. So although today we're only going to focus on step one, which is because I think this would take a lot longer than a half an hour or even an hour. So we're going to do step one for each of the three. So broad brushstrokes. This, this is all about getting your thoughts and ideas down on paper. And we're not necessarily looking to identify specific messages just yet. The idea is that you just let the floodgates open and, and just write. It doesn't matter what it is. In fact, you may think you're writing something really obscure but it might shine a light on some deeper truth. And this is, this is the step we're gonna focus on today. But for the future, step two is uh, where we start to look back. So we, we've gone through step one, we've written loads of stuff down, and then we're just really trying to pick out some common themes in step two and start to form uh, some messages and start putting things into some kind of order. And then the final step is where you crystallize the message down to a set of uh, statements that resonate with you to boil down your message into uh, statements that you will write down and keep somewhere safe. So just before we start, uh, there's one thing I would like to mention um, 
for me anyway, that I feel this list of values and beliefs are aspirational to a certain extent. So they're intended to be a positive list, list of statements that you can refer to whenever you feel the need. So in the process of this, you may well uncover some self-limiting beliefs that are maybe holding you back in life. Uh, you may believe, for example, that you aren't good enough in certain situations and that past experiences have galvanized this belief to the point where it's having a, a negative impact on your life. Uncovering these self-limiting beliefs can be as important as establishing some positive beliefs about yourself or the world. And developing awareness of your situation can only be a good thing and can allow you to develop a strategy for dealing with it. And you could even reframe your negative beliefs into positive ones. Like for example, I procrastinate a lot. I tend to sit on the fence of a lot of arguments. But what could be viewed on as being indecisive, um, I, like one of my uh, belief statements is there's a t there are two sides to every story. And that is, that is very, that's something that I hold very close to me because it, it prevents me from being overly judgmental and demonizing people for their views. Um, when we live in what could be construed as a massively polarized society, the ability to detach myself from a certain point of view means that I don't feel threatened when someone offers a counter argument. So, I mean, I digress, but you can hopefully see how the benefit of identifying your uh, negative self-limiting beliefs and looking at them from a, from a different angle. So the idea that this document is a, is a positive influence on your life and gives you certainty and purpose when making decisions. So keep that in mind when you're formulating your final statements. So step one, we're going to have a look at uh, writing down some values. In the ebook. there is a big long list of values on one of the pages, but I've also included that here. Uh, this isn't by no means an exhaustive list. I'm sure there are hundreds, but um, so for the next couple of minutes, just um, write down as many as you like and any thoughts you might have as to why. And if you want to type any questions, if you've got any questions, type them in the, uh, in the chat. Should I add some music at this point? So uh, we're not not just writing down the the um, the value statements. Maybe just if you can think of why these apply to you, you know, maybe certain areas of your life that you've applied these. Write all that down as well. Just this is the this is the step where we're just getting everything down on paper. Okay, so hopefully, uh, hopefully we've um, got a, some good stuff going on there. We're starting to um, get this list together. Um, so again, next we're going to look at beliefs, and yeah, so these are just statements that um, I don't know, maybe common themes that uh, that you that, that keep cropping up in your mind when you think about certain. Uh, situations or you're having trouble thinking about something you apply a certain belief so again we're going to just spend a couple of minutes 
So things to consider. So I think back to some difficult situations you've been in in the past. How did you deal with these situations? What are some life lessons that you've learned and lived by? A lot of the time these messages can come from yeah, parents or mentors or just life experiences that you've had. Um, so again, just start writing down anything that comes into your mind. got another minute or so and then we'll, uh, we'll move on can you see how um yeah you could you could easily spend a, a fair bit of time on this so I, I just want to get it going today so yeah in the chat there you said you've done this for your business but not yourself I, that that's um yeah, we did it in our business as well. And I think that was one of the things that prompted me to do this actually, because it's, 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 it's useful. It's useful for the business. So why, you know, why not do it for yourself? So finally, mission statement or life force. So imagine that you are 100 years old on your deathbed and one minute left to live, a bit grim, but uh, your great, great grandchild asks, tell me what I should do with my life. This is, but this is really advice to yourself. Again, don't worry about if something seems irrelevant or obscure, just just, uh, just keep writing. Okay. So I'm sure you could spend a lot longer than two minutes writing stuff like this down, but um, so this this is my mission statement, and this is I've taken the this is this is an idea of how I've kind of put my message together. Um, I've taken what was quite a long 
piece of text and sort of boiled it down again. I've, I've gone through stage two and then stage three and boiled it down into, a, again, a list of statements that's slightly easier to remember. So for this, I used, um, there was a the podcast I listened to a guy called Chris Williamson and he uses a, a mnemonic to remember his list. I thought it was a great idea of uh, how to remember your, your sort of your mission statement, if you like. So my list spells out the word bagel, as you can see. That's a fairly memorable word. Like, so granted, I had to sort of play around with the words a bit, but it's, it makes sense to me and, and it allows me to recall everything really quickly. So, so for me, balanced emotions is all about um, approaching situations with calmness and composure. Um, and then appreciation is just general gratitude. Growth is just continuing to learn. Exploration is living with curiosity because, uh, again, that helps you reduce judgment and see failure as result instead of potential failure, things like that. And then legacy is um, is a kind of self-fulfilling prophecy. It's like, am I living to my core values and beliefs? And am I making decisions that I will thank myself for tomorrow? So that's step one. Um, and hopefully you've made a good start on your own list uh, and you feel encouraged to finish this off. <clears throat> Personally, I find having this list of values and beliefs helps me on a number of levels. Uh, and hope, and I'm hoping this will provide a framework for you to do the same. So it's really up to you to develop your own playbook that suits you. Spend some time on it and make it your own. And that's that's the end. If if you want a copy of the ebook, you can get it from the website. If you just subscribe to the newsletter, you'll get that. And or email me. Uh, the details are there. So any questions or and or thank you very much. <laughs>